Hello and welcome to Outside Xbox. You're watching Show of the Week. I'm Andy. And I'm Mike. So uh, what have you been up to this week? Oh, I've been keeping an eye on the new Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, to see what uh, new advances they're including. Ah, like in military technology. No, Mike, you idiot, dumb idiot. In beard and moustache combination technology, oh, obviously. Oh, right. Oh, hang on a second. New trailer. Let's have a look. Help us track it. If you stay, we can help you. But if you stay, you fight. Yelling out to Whoa, don't think I've ever seen that before. Cutting edge stuff. Mustache and sideburns and the soul patch. What a combo. Man, really pushing the envelope. Seems like an upgrade from the original. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, which was of course Captain Price's mutton chops into the mustache. Do you want to talk about any element of the game other than the facial hair? If we have to. The rules of engagement have changed. If you can't identify the target, you are the target. So we've both seen a bit of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, right? We both mm -hmm. popped over and uh, had a look at some of the new campaign stuff that they revealed, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, well, uh, a lot of people have played the multiplayer when mm. the beta was happening recently. Correct. I am going to be saying beta, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. That's Deal with it. Say it. Deal with it, sunglasses come down. Oh, um, but the campaign's been pretty secretive so far, um, and I don't know about you, but like that's an important part of Call of Duties for me. I've like really enjoyed some of the campaigns. Yeah, the Call campaigns are great. Loads of mad stuff happens, like the Eiffel Tower falls over. Yeah, that was bonkers. Yeah, that's and a good one. Or you the siege of New York and Jon Snow kills you in space. Yeah, that was also good. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, good one. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So this one, uh, I mean, the budget for this and the visual fidelity seems to have really ramped up. Like mm. I was, just first things first, really impressed by the quality of the stuff you see. Yes, a very serious man from Infinity Ward gave us a presentation mm. using words like Telegrammetry. Photogrammetry. Photogrammetry. <laughs> What's telegrammetry? It's when you write a, one of those messages that says stop a lot in it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. yeah. In old not that. Like. They're not sending <laughs> telegrams around the office. Yeah. They use the photogram to yeah. get on the man textures. Yeah. On the man. They put the text. They took the man's textures and put them on the fake computer man. <laughs> what Andy's trying to say is that uh, even the sort of dead bodies lying around in the levels are like. 3D photogrammetry models of real people, so they look super convincing. That's what I said. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what you said. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, performance capture is amazing as well. We like saw some of the actors, and they were talking about the kind of process of, mm -hmm. uh, of performance capture. And while the kind of process is the same as a lot of games that you've probably already played, I think the results are astonishing. Apart from the fact that Captain Price's face looks fictional. Yes, I didn't. I hope that the actor, because we were sat very close to the actors, I hope he didn't see the, my visible disappointment that he doesn't have Captain Price's beard. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he even had to grow the facial hair for yeah. the role. He which came out and shows I, a lack of commitment. I was like, uh, yeah. He's a very handsome man, but he looks strange in the game. Like his, I don't think they've quite got his eyes right. Could have just, could have just shaved that. He was, he had a beard. Could have just he did. That. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, it's not over yet. Trust me. I always have. Um, so that was all very, very impressive. They showed us uh, a, a full sort of mission. Uh, we've only got brief glimpses of footage of it to show you, but um, it was basically like Call of Duty does PT. That's that was sort of it was how set I in a suburban it. house in yeah. North London, mm. and it you know, it reminded me of those kind of. Um, Lethal Enforcer style light gun games mm. where you're going through a thing and, and people, people like and go, ah. holding a baby and like, don't shoot! Yeah, there's there like, a bit of that stuff. Yeah. Terrorists like, haha! Secure. Yeah. Ugh. So it's, it was very close quarters compared to a lot of Call of Duty stuff. You know, like previous Call of Duty. Campaigns have been quite wide open, lots of bullets flying around, but this is a lot this more tense. A cramped a lot more, like yeah. stairwell in a yeah dark house. Yeah, everyone's mm -hmm. like shuffling past each other and stuff like that. Mm. Um, it's very tense though, very um, almost like horror yeah. at atmosphere to it. Which I'm totally into. With the increased visual fidelity, it again a bit like PT. It's a very convincing environment. Like it looks mm. really, really like close up. The detail is it's absolutely all thanks perfect. to the photogram. Um, so that was cool, uh, and um, I think the other thing that really struck me 
was that one of the three characters that you play is a female Middle Eastern resistance leader. Yes. Which is like not a story that you see often in video games. So I thought that was pretty cool. That was very cool. And the she's the missions that we saw her in, she's talking to uh, the character Alex, who mm. I thought was going to be the playable character because he looks like such a Call of Duty character. Yeah. He's got like tattoos and the really elaborate mustache yeah, and the big like, spiky combo hair. and the spiky hair. And he looks basically like Troy Baker got fired through an urban outfitters. <laughs> <laughs> if you stay, we can help you. But if you stay, you fight. Yelling out to him. <laughs> like, what came out yeah. the other side. Um, so, yeah, I was like, oh, that's definitely the character. But they're like, no, you're playing as her instead, yeah. which is, yeah, very cool. And I think she's got um, kind of uh, a lot of a kind of personal story. It looked like her father is somehow on the other side of the, of the conflict. Mm -hmm. And there's some really interesting stuff there. But we are all killers here, no? And again, just a phenomenal performance uh, and actually a far more accurate face capture as well, I thought, you know. Yeah. She actually looks a lot like the actress who's playing her. So, um, yeah, I thought that was that was cool and kind of, I don't want to say like a, a brave choice because I, I'm sure everything's like thought through and stuff with Call of Duty, but I, I think it's cool that that sort of side of a story will be told in a, in a Call of Duty game that will be played by like millions and millions of people and it mm -hmm. might they're constantly, constantly banging on about how they want it to be a kind of nuanced story and like not just morally black and white and you know that kind of uh, shades of grey type stuff in the middle. Um, and I think that's what's going to make it really, really interesting. I, I wasn't even sure actually whether they were going to, you know, this because it's called Modern Warfare. I thought they might be sort of rebooting Call of Duty 4. I mean, I know right. they did that remake, yeah. but I wonder whether it was going to be a similar story again. I'm just glad it has. A campaign because, like you say, I do enjoy a kind of action movie roller coaster Call of Duty yeah, campaign. Absolutely. And they, they, I was sure that they were going to just take them out forever after they after they ditched it from Black Ops Four. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, it's weird. I've sort of I almost forgotten that Black Ops Four did not have a campaign whatsoever. Yeah, and it it, it is a really strange mission, isn't it? <laughs> When they were um, talking about it in the presentation, they were like, yeah, we, we wanted to sort of unify the experience. So it does have three modes. Yes. It's um, campaign, multiplayer, multiplayer and, spec and spec ops. Spec ops is interesting because there was a, a brief furore about um, the fact that it looked like spec ops as an entire mode was going to be a PlayStation exclusive for a year. Oh, yeah. This? They said something about exclusive something. Yeah. Wait, explain this to me. Well, I think actually it was kind of miscommunicated because apparently like Spec Ops mode is going to exist on Xbox, but it, it just might not have some of it. So it's an element of it rather than right. the entire mode. But Spec Ops is the co-op mode, basically. And it, they were talking about it in terms of, there's going to be a big reveal of this coming up, I think, in the next couple of weeks. So there'll be more info on Spec Ops coming soon. Uh, but it's essentially a co-op mode. Uh, right. and apparently, again, coming back to that kind of unified thing, um, it's going to continue the story on, so not necessarily with the same characters as campaign, but it's, yeah. it's set in the same universe, it's the same world, but it's their sort of co-op offering. Progress in Spec Ops counts towards your multiplayer mm -hmm. progress, and everything is all in the same universe with the same characters. And when they were describing this and talking about how it had been done in previous Call of Duty, I was like, Oh yeah, it was basically like four different games mm. that all had yeah, no like zombies was other. totally different from zombies was totally blackout. No, it's completely yeah. different tone to the rest of the game. Mm. You're like, I, you know, I can see the argument for that, but in the same way, I think it makes a lot of sense for this game to just try and keep everything in one place yeah. and with the same tone and the same characters and all that stuff. Twenty years of civil war. Yeah, there's nothing simple about it. I think these days, you know, it, Call of Duty games were so similar. I think this is a real point of divergence, and from now on, I, you know, I sort of hope this is going to be the case. But like, each Call of Duty can kind of stand on its own merits. So Black Ops, you know, does the kind of uh, battle royale and the zombies and all that kind of stuff, and does its own thing. But then you just get one of those every couple of years, and then on the other years you get a totally different Call of Duty. And it's about time they came back to Modern Warfare as well. You know, sure. Like inf infinite warfare was kind of all right, and advanced warfare was kind of all right. But I think during that entire process, combined with the fact that Black Ops was kind of futuristic, everyone was just like begging for a, a modern warfare game. And, you yeah, know, it's, it's it's still the most sort of 
I think still, even in the face of Black Ops, it's still like the most beloved of those brands. Mm. Um, so it's kind of cool that it's coming back and it's a bit more plausible. But I just, I, I could not believe, you can see every dollar of the budget dripping off the screen yeah. every time they show footage from it. It's The performance capture is astonishing. It looks like claustrophobic and, and scary at times and, and, and involving and immersive and all those words that you, mm. you'd want to use. And some of the best mustache technology. Serious, serious mustache. So technology. many polygons in those mustaches. So what did you say Jane was this week? Oh, she's getting heavily into Tropico 6. Oh, is that that dictator simulator? Yeah, that's the one. How's it going? Good. I mean, apart from for her citizens. There you go. There you go, everyone. Be <laughs> inspired. Jane statue. <laughs> Be inspired by my yes. majesty. Yes. Why are you walking away? <laughs> As a benevolent dictator, I insist on building some accommodation. You've got uh, a dungeon. <laughs> Just throw them all in there. Now fire is raging. Fire. What? 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 Whoa. Where? Where? Quick, build a fire station. Where? Oh no, in the Spy Academy. No. no. I see. Um, should probably move on to the comments then. Agreed. They say that pride comes before a fall, but pride can also come after a fall if it was a particularly cool fall that didn't actually hurt. Here you go. I look nasty. I told you I meant to do it. Anyway, a place where pride definitely can come before a fall is in games. Like when you encounter a boss who looks easy and unintimidating, who then transforms into something you would have sooner not picked a fight with. So Mike, that was a clip from a video we made about bosses who look unintimidating, but then, once you start fighting them, all of a sudden, oh no, giant horror monsters. Mm, so many giant horror monsters hiding. Kind of a, kind of a pr pretty big trope. Yeah, it turns in, out happened a lot. Yeah, yeah, lots of lots of material to work with. Do you mm. want to comment? Yeah, let's yeah lay it on me. Anthony Floyd says a little warning next time. Resident Evil, geez. The warning is that it's a Resident Evil game. If something transforms into a massive Akira monster at the end, isn't half expected at this point. You're not very good at patterns. <laughs> yeah, I guess by the seventh Resident Evil, we'll probably start to notice the running theme. Yeah, although it's it's generally more gradual. I would say, like William Birkin starts out as a regular William Birkin, yeah, and he becomes a, like a William Birkin with a big arm. Yeah, it's in, an evolutionary sort of process. Whereas, in, yeah. rather than just exploding into a balloon of flesh, then he's William Birkin with a big arm and a big chest, and like half, half his trousers is off. Yeah, and then he's giant flesh monster that's the size of a train can. No trousers at all. Filling the entire thing with like a teeth. Zero trousers. So I would say, yeah, it's <laughs> like the ty the tyrant is always a tyrant. Yes. All the stuff in Resident Evil 1 was all like a giant shark or a big spider or something. They were all just, they just, were yeah. they were an absolute. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it is kind of a, a Resident Evil thing, I suppose. We could have filled the list with just Resident Evil monsters. But when it's, I mean, an old lady in a wheelchair. That is pretty disarming when you, when you come up on that. And... I would say even having played all the Resident Evil games, you'd be forgiven for not expecting her to turn into a giant monster the size of a pizza hut. <laughs> Still, Lorenzo is extremely old and as such, when it comes time to actually fight him, all he's able to do is crawl towards you, having long ago lost the use of his legs. Speaking of uh, Lorenzo from Haunting Ground, JRL Rock 712 says, all he's able to do is crawl towards you. Or, that was the most terrifying thing I've seen all week. See that, that Quite footage weak. of mm, from the video? Slightly distant, Lorenzo yeah. is like coming at you like that. He's really fast. Back, back Lorenzo. He's like going upstairs like that. <laughs> I'm like, how are you? He must be like smacking his chin off a... There's something very horror-y about a creepy, almost spidery walk. Yeah. That's one of Jane's D&D &D powers, isn't it? It's to do a terrifying spider, spider walk, walk up spider a Spider climb, yeah. it's called. Um, which apparently, I didn't realise, you can cast it on anyone. And make them do it. And make, you can, they can do it, but she doesn't want to share. <laughs> <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, she just no, wants to be the It's part one. of her whole deal. Yeah, that's um, fair enough. So. I like that she's choosing powers based exclusively on how creepy they are. <laughs> yes. Did What's you, the uh, most creepy thing? Did you play Haunting Grounds? No, never. It's great. It was news to me. Yeah, it's um, it kind of got overlooked, but uh, there's, it's it's sort of a spiritual successor to the Clock Tower series. Yes, which I'm aware of with Scissor Man and all yeah. that stuff. But it's like you and this cool dog just going around the spooky castle trying to avoid nasty people. Does the dog make it more or less creepy? Less. The dog's right. great. It's called okay. Huey. And like it's in the boy. new Blair Witch game? Yeah. Dog, less creepy, more creepy. Dog makes it less creepy. Dog always makes it less creepy. But then aren't Unless the developers it's... shooting themselves in the foot by putting a dog in there, making it less creepy? I mean, that's what they're going for, though. You need something to... You have a... There's this sense of powerlessness... Right. ...that you have on your own, that the dog is... It's like your gun in Resident Evil. Yeah. The dog attacks things. I'm trying to think of something where a dog makes it more creepy. Maybe Cujo. 
Mm. But that's it. <laughs> that's just that's the one. Yeah, the one thing where a dog <laughs> makes it creepier. Lastly on the topic, Asra Kishin says, little did they know that human Soulsborn bosses are the real scary ones. Is that true? Like, uh, the human, the ones that look human? I mean, I don't know. I find the ones that are big dragons with a chest full of teeth more scary, but I mean, you know, they, they've kind of got, I mean, scary in terms of like challenging, probably. Yeah. Like the really tough ones are sort of human. What about old old Father Gascoigne? Well, he's only human, spoiler alert, only human for part way through the, through yeah, the so fight. Yeah, so is Vicar Amelia, though. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's true. That's the point, right? The, the ones that look human and then you get into it. And they become a... Yeah, become yeah, a I guess so. I, I think that's fair. Um, I, Vicar Amelia really does look like she turns into a giant Afghan hound. Yeah, like, it's a bit... Distracting. The sort of the main. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I need to play more Bloodborne. It's so good. And in in this the month of Spooktober, mm. I think probably it's time to play a bit more Bloodborne. All right. Um, yeah. Deal. Oh wait, there's a bunch of people AFK. Let me just shoot them all. <laughs> like a super honourable guy. Yeah. There we go. So that was some footage of us owning everyone at Call yeah, of Duty. Yeah. Not sucking at Call of Duty. Yeah, do you remember how good we were. Bet you never thought you'd see it on this channel. Yeah. Brilliant. 360 no scope headshots it was all the time. We had cut most of them out. Yeah. We didn't want to make everyone feel bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we want to show off. Also, yeah. it's kind of our brand to be bad at games now. So yeah. we suddenly put up a video of doesn't us look, amazing. It doesn't look good for us. People yeah. would unsubscribe in droves. <laughs> anyway, Eight comments it. on this. Ath Athanasius says, never trust someone who appears to be AFK in a game like this. Many years ago, I was playing Counter-Strike. It appeared that one of my team was AFK the whole match. When it was down to only him and the last enemy, the enemy found our AFKer, walked around him a few times, then seemed to be lining up a shot right in front of the AFKer. Just as the AFKer woke up and hit fire, headshot, our team wins. Pro strats, I like it. Just, well, like a huntsman spider, just waiting for the moment to strike. What it relies on is them not shooting you immediately yeah. when they see you, like lining it up and like... Yeah, see, I'm bad enough at video games that if I see anyone, I just shoot them immediately, even if they're on my own team. So... <laughs> Uh, it I definitely was, wouldn't be a strategy that would work against me. I was editing that Call of Duty video and there was a bit where... What did I do? You you got shot in the back. Right. And we're like, oh, it's bad. It should be against the Geneva Convention to shoot people in the back. Right. And then later on you're like, oh, shoot him in the back, quick, shoot him <laughs> in the back. Yeah. It's the double standard. Having established that the Geneva Convention doesn't apply... Oh, right. Yeah, then you're free to... Then you're free to shoot people in the spine as much as you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, That's... like, I mean, I think, again, uh, our brand is massive inconsistency. <laughs> so I think people would unsubscribe if they thought I was genuinely living by any kind of rule set or yeah. moral code or whatsoever. Indeed good at Call of Duty. Or that, yeah. So that was disproved by the next clip. I've really, I've got jam all over my face. There they are. No, in the head or leg. Oh, not... How did he shoot me through a concrete thing? Let me see that kill cam. <laughs> oh, the answer is he beamed me on oh, the head. Oh, you got beamed in the head. <laughs> With right. Semtex. Credit where it's due. Well, Mike, that was a clip of you getting killed with a grenade to the forehead. Mm. It was a block of Semtex, I think. I don't know what it was, but it, I only saw it very briefly, if at all, before it, it killed me. Your eyes. Yeah. I felt like I was behind a column, and I was like, you can't possibly have shot me from that angle. Somehow they'd thrown a grenade, and in the time it had taken to arc over, they'd moved behind the thing. So as far as I was concerned, I was in cover, and all of a sudden I was killed by something... Wow. To the side of the head. Yeah, well, as noted in the comments, via no name says, Mike getting killed because he got hit in the head by a brick of Semtex. Karmic death achieved. Did you ever think explosives would turn on you like this, Mike? No, I thought they'd be my friends forever. I can't believe they've done this. I thought you had something, you <laughs> and explosions. Yeah. But no. no. I've been betrayed. I've been betrayed. Um, you weren't even killed by an explosion. No, I wasn't. I was killed by just the blunt force trauma. That could have been anything. Of that could have some been some a... metal or something hitting my head. Yeah, that could have been a. DVD box, yeah. a heavy steel book, you know, not a plastic. Yeah, but anything thrown hard enough probably could kill you. Like, it definitely, had, I mean, if you threw a DVD hard enough, it would probably go directly through your head. It through, you're not gonna get a DVD through someone's head. Don't know if it goes, you know, you know when you can like, do like cut a apple in half with a pencil or whatever those people do? No. You know ninjas, you know ninjas. <laughs> okay. All the that ninjas can do. Probably a ninja could throw a DVD so hard that it wouldn't have time to shatter, it would just slice directly through your neck. Scientists, come on, help me out here. Surely that's a true thing. Cool, okay, well, final comment. <laughs> Clarinho D. Mark says, 803, it looks like all that time Andy spent on RDR2 is paying off. Double kill. What's the weapon you use, Andy, when you're playing? It's like an, uh, yeah, yeah, like an old time. Single shot rifle. Handlebar. Oh, yeah. 
Nicely that. done. All right. Look at that reflex. Let's squad, Let's squad up. He won't know who to shoot. There he we shot go. Me. Got him. <laughs> See, I'm good with the cowboy weapons. You were good with those old timey weapons. It's true. What we need is a. Call of Duty style multiplayer team deathmatch game, but right. it's all cowboys. And no, I know you can do first person in Red Dead Redemption 2. Doesn't count though. Doesn't count though. I get shot all the time in Red Dead Redemption 2, it's bad. Yeah, it's not built for being a fast paced team deathmatch no. quick kill. Do you remember like Outlaws? The League yeah, of or like Call of Juarez. Call, uh, <laughs> Call of Juarez. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Did that um, ever have a multiplayer mode? Yeah. But was it sure. bad? Yeah, I just, yeah, I want Infinity Ward to, to go right now that we've done Modern Warfare. Cowboy Old warfare. timey warfare. Cowboy times warfare. There's no, there's literally no reason why you couldn't do a Call of Duty that was like Cowboy times. Yeah. There's I mean, no reason. They've done all sorts. They went, they've been to space. Yeah, exactly. And you'd be, I mean, they'd have to fudge the accuracy of the weapons a bit if you're using like... Yeah, but they did that. Revolvers. They did that with World War Two, didn't they? Oh yeah. And like exactly. Battlefield's done it with World War One. I. I mean, so World War One is basically cowboy, cowboy times. times, but just less fun. Yeah. It's cow. It's cowboy times without all the jovial enjoyment of cowboy times. Yeah. And if you want, you can just sort of sit around, like oiling the barrel of your lever action Winchester. Okay, you've gotten into some weird stuff now. You, you've lost you can, me. You can just be like, seems to me. Killing a man is about the worst thing man can do. <laughs> Try and finish that sentence during a Call of Duty deathmatch. Take I'm away dead. all he's ever had and all he ever will have. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Only kill when the time is necessary. <laughs> and then right. your, your kill death ratio for the entire thing is like. Zero, one, zero. One. You just never get no, found. Zero, because eventually the guy who burned down your paws blacksmith shop turns up and it's like. <laughs> guy who burned down your Blacksmith is that one of the kill streaks? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Burning down your someone's paws, blacksmith. Shop. <laughs> I don't know. I'm out. Anyway, I'm out, Andy. In, I was in. Can, and now I'm out. Wards, do it. You could get photogrammetry. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Take a photo of a cowboy. Yeah. Anyway, we should probably move on because I'm going to need to field a lot of calls from Infinity Ward. Sure, to talk sure to you me are. About my idea. Wanting so, you to stop talking. Yeah, wanting the good business idea. So come on, let's keep this thing rolling. Sweet. All right. That's it for Show of the Week, thanks for watching. But before you go, a quick reminder that we are doing a D&D live show at EGX 2019 in London at the Excel Centre. Tickets for Saturday are sold out, but there are still a handful, a small handful of tickets. Probably is about as many tickets as you can mm. hold in a hand are yes. available for the Friday show. Uh, you go to egx.net forward slash egx forward slash tickets if you want to come and join us. Comes with a pin badge. Yeah, free pin badge. How can you refuse? Well, I mean, you pay for the ticket, but included in the ticket price is a badge, precious badge. <laughs> so imagine that, what a treat that would be. Um, yeah, and if you can't make it to that, maybe you press the like button. Sure. Well. That's kind of like being there in spirit. Does that work? Sort of, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, it very, very physically won't be there, but, but we'll know that By you pressing can. the like button, by being there in spirit. We'll be thinking about you while we're there. Exactly. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. So what kind of facial hair do you think they'll have in the next Call of Duty game? I think they'll have a moustache, but then an upside down moustache underneath. What? On like, the chin. Like a like a sort of that's like a burger beard. with the mouth as the meat. <laughs> like a, <laughs> so just are you talking about like a long thin beard along the jaw like Craig Davis? No, 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 like a full moustache with the twirly bits. But, but upside down. But like completely mirrored. Totally symmetrical along the horizontal axis. Yeah, you could probably do that. I, I think the technology's there. I think we're finally there. Could do that. Could you do something like the Hunger Games style? Oh yeah. Sideburns looping. Yeah, all the way around and, and connecting to the monobrow. I don't think that's possible. I don't think you're going to have temple hair. You don't know, need depends how old you get. If you live to 100 years old, your entire face will be hair. Probably. <laughs> you, do you become a wolf man? Yeah, you become a wolf man. Yeah. Birthday. Yeah. They tell the guy from the Queen <laughs> and, and lycanthropy. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right, well, that's something to look forward to.